Hi friends, today we're doing Unit 10, Lesson 2, the first English colony. We're going to start by going over the key vocabulary words that you'll be hearing in today's reading. Our first word is persuade, which means to convince. Our next word is overgrown, covered in plants that have grown in an uncontrolled way. Our next word is alarming, disturbing or causing fear. And our last word is harshest, most difficult and unpleasant. We are now going to move into today's reading. Chapter 2, the first English colony. Robert and George ran along, the long, ran along the long stretch of sandy beach on Roanoke Island. From time to time, they splashed in the warm waters and collected shells. It was late August in the year 1587, and if all went well, they and the other travels, travelers would be the first successful English colonists in North America. They and others had watched as their leader, John White, sailed away. He was returning to England to get the supplies they needed to survive on this island. However, the reason why the boys were playing on this beach began many years earlier. This is an image of Robert and George playing on the beach on Roanoke Island. In the 1500s, Spain conquered large areas of Central and South America. The Spanish built towns and cities there. Spanish galleons sailed across the Atlantic Ocean, laden with gold and other natural resources taken from these regions. Spain was becoming very rich. The Queen of England, Elizabeth I, and her favorite knight, Sir Walter Riley, wanted England to become as rich and powerful as Spain. They wanted English people to go to this new world. In 1584, Sir Walter persuaded Queen Elizabeth to let him try to create an English colony in the Americas. It was decided that the English would stay away from the powerful Spanish conquistadors. Instead of sailing to Central or South America, they would sail north to North America. With that decided, a group of explorers set off to find a suitable place to settle. This is a group of English explorers prepared to sail to North America. The explorers who went on this expedition in 1584 reported back to Sir Walter and told him that Roanoke Island and told him about Roanoke Island. They believed this island was a perfect place for the first English colony. Sir Walter's explorers managed to build a fort on the island, but they failed to create a colony. They abandoned their mission, leaving only 15 men behind to guard the fort. However, Sir Walter was determined to succeed. In 1587, more ships set out for the New World. Robert and George were members of the second group of would-be English colonists. They had been very excited to set off on this great adventure. This time, the colonists planned to land north of Roanoke Island in the Chesapeake Bay area. There, they hoped to establish the first successful English colony. Unfortunately, during the trip, there was a disagreement between their leader, John White, and members of the ship's crew. As a result, members of the ship's crew refused to take the English tra travelers to the Chesapeake Bay area. So Robert, George, and the other passengers were forced to land on Roanoke Island in late July. Robert and George had not minded this change of plan. They had simply been happy to be on solid ground once more. However, this was not the end of the travelers' troubles. After landing, John White led a group of men to Fort Riley, the fort that had been built by the previous group. Robert and George had not been allowed to go with the men. At the fort, John White and the other men expected to find the 15 English soldiers who had been left behind to guard it. When they arrived at the fort, the soldiers were nowhere to be found, the fort was overgrown with weeds, and the skeleton of one soldier was discovered. The caption of this image says, John White and his group found the fort overgrown with weeds and the skeleton of one soldier. When John White and the men returned to the beach with this news, Robert and George had felt scared. The boys were especially concerned when the adults suggested that the Roanoke Native Americans were responsible for the death of the soldiers. The only good news was that it was possible to repair the homes in Fort Riley. The settlers got to work. Robert, George, and more than 100 men, women, and children worked from sunrise to sunset to reconstruct these homes. However, no one spoke of the most alarming thing of all. When winter came, they did not have enough food to survive until spring. They had arrived at a time when it was too late to plant crops. Men, women, and children reconstructed the fort. 
Robert, George, and the others did not want to return to England starving and exhausted. They wanted to succeed. They wanted Queen Elizabeth and Sir Walter to be proud of them, but they needed a plan. One month after they arrived, it was decided that John White would take one of the two remaining ships and return to England to get supplies. If all went well, he would be back before the harshest days of winter arrived. So Robert and George had watched and played as John White's ship sailed out of sight. The two boys remained on the sandy shore and enjoyed the freedom this new land offered. Neither of the boys missed the busy, crowded streets of Portsmouth, England. They did not miss the rain or the sight of the poor people who begged on the streets. This was to be their new home, and they were thankful to be there. The question was, would they survive? Do you think the settlers survived? Does the colony survive? Does Roanoke Island become the first successful English colony in America, in North America? This image says John White's ship sailed away. You may now move on to Unit 10, Lesson 2, Google Form.